As stunning as they are, most white horses are actually not born white. They turn white over time. But unlike Arctic animals that turn white for camouflage in snow and then turn back to their original color in the spring, once a horse turns white, they never go back to their original color. Clearly, it's not the same process at work. Horses also get white or gray hair as they age, just like us human and dogs do. But for some horses, they start to go gray out as foals. So it's not due to age per se either. So what does cause some horses to lose all pigment then? As we will see, the reason is stranger than you might think. First of all, to avoid any confusion, white horses that are not born white are called gray, even if they are in fact completely white in color. True white horses do exist. They are born white, and they are much rarer than gray horses, and there's an easy way to tell them apart. We will see how to spot the difference in just a moment. A colt I bred, Drablo here, was born at night like most foals, but when I saw him in the full light of day, wow, look at those markings, flashy, and my favorite combination of bay with a lot of white. Pretty striking. His dam, Deas, as you can see, was a gray mare, and so I knew that there was a chance that he could turn gray. But how did I know that? What were the chances that he would, in fact, turn gray? And if he did, would he turn pure white, or would he stay speckled like his dam? I recently took another look at the signs behind gray horses, and here's what I found out. First, let's understand where color comes from in horses, because we can better understand why it then disappears. Colors in all mammal in general not just horses, come in only two pigments, eumelanin and pheomelanin, and they give the various shades of color you see in all furry mammals, from black to orange and everything in between. Yes, even in the case of the rainbow squirrels somebody told me about in the comment of another video. Thank you for that, they are very cool. These pigments are only made by very specialized cells called the melanocyte. These melanocytes are created very early in the life of the embryo and they migrate as the embryo grows to the various part of the body that will require some pigment. Part of the bodies that do not get those specialized cells will simply have no pigment. The skin will be pink and there'll be the hair that grows on it will be white. That's how horses end up with socks and stars on their forehead, for example. And yes, to an extreme, that is how we get true white horses, when their marking basically covers their whole body, leaving them all white from head to toe with pink skin right from birth. And that is how you can tell a real white horse from a gray horse, by looking at where the skin is exposed, on the muzzle, under the tail, around the eyes. This, as you can see, is a gray horse that has turned completely white, whereas this one was born white and can be truly called a white horse. It does have pink skin. Gray in horses, it turns out, is a dominant trait. It's always expressed. If a horse has the gray gene, it will turn gray. There's no hiding it. And it doesn't pop out of nowhere either. Gray horses must have at least one gray parent. So in the case of Diablo here, his sire was black, but his dam, as you can see, was gray. And so we knew that there was a chance that he could turn gray if he inherited the gray gene from his dam. But why did it matter if he turned gray? I mean, it didn't matter to me, but he was for sale. And the reality is that for some people, the color of a horse is part of the whole appeal, along with its athletic ability, its personality and temperament, its height, its sex, all that. Besides, some people just don't like gray horse because they prefer other colors. And as we see, that has changed over time. But some people don't like to own a gray horse because they're just harder to keep clean. And that is certainly true. While other people know that gray horses are more likely to develop melanoma, a kind of skin cancer, something we will discuss in more depth in just a few minutes. So I needed to know what to tell people that were interested in buying Diablo. Would he turn gray or not? In humans, there are many genes that are responsible for us getting gray hair as we age, and most of them are related to cellular senescence or aging. Basically, cells that make the pigment in our hair gets tired over time and they lose the ability to make the pigment. Horses and dogs, 
for have the gray hair for the same reason and you will see that in the face of older animals but they don't turn completely gray because of it old horses of any color will show white mostly around their eyes and on their face along with some white showing up along their flanks too but it turns out that there's only one gene responsible for the complete color loss that we see in horses that turn white it was identified in 2005 and how it worked turned out to be unexpected and counterintuitive actually. By the way, if you like the scientific and practical aspect of raising horses, then you're in the right place because that's pretty much all I talk about. I would like to take just a few moments to thank my Patreon member for their financial support. And if you would like to join them in helping my channel, um, these are the easiest way you can do. And thank you, every little bit actually helps. So the mutation that causes this rapid and permanent loss of pigment in horses in fowl is found on the gene called syntaxin 17 or STX17 for short. To understand its role, let's consider how every hair on your horse gets its color. At the root of every hair is the hair follicle. That is where the hair is built a few cells at a time and pushed out. And that's where the melanocyte are making pigment. If you want to know more about how hair grows, take a look at this video where I go in great detail about it. So the gene syntaxin 17 instructs the transformation of stem cells into melanocyte in the hair follicle. The mutation in syntaxin 17 that we call the gray gene causes the hyperproliferation of melanocyte in the follicle of the hair. Simply put, STX17 mutation causes an accelerated, accelerated sorry, creation of melanocyte and in turn they make a lot of pigment. They go into overdrive in gray horses compared to horses that do not have that mutation. Because horses shed their hair and their follicle twice a year with the cycle of the season, this hyperproliferation very quickly exhausts the supply of stem cells that become melanocyte, and as a result, less and less are produced, and in a matter of years or shed cycle, they're completely gone, and the hair follicle can no longer make pigment cell, and so the horse turns gray and then white. So in a strange twist, it's a gene that in a way causes too much pigmentation that leads to a loss of the ability to make pigment over time. There's also an interesting link between what we discovered about this mutation and what people had observed long before knowing anything about genes and genetics. Well, first of all, it was well understood that before genetic tests that no gray foal would be born of non-gray parent. You need at least one. But what if there is one gray parent, like in the case of Diablo here? How could breeders, like me, predict if it was going to turn gray in a few years? Well, over time people started to notice a pattern. They would see that foals that would eventually gray out, they were often born with a little bit of white hair around their eyes, something you don't see in normally colored horses. Or sometimes they also showed some hyperpigmentation as newborn. Sometimes they showed both signs. Hyperpigmentation. Well, as you can see, most foals are born with paler legs than they will have in adulthood. The baby hair is just lighter. And when they shed their baby coat for the first time, the true color of their legs appear. But in the case of foals that will eventually turn gray, it's the opposite. They're born with very dark legs. This hyperpigmentation turns out to be a strong clue that the foal could very well be turning gray in a few years. Sometime, they actually turn gray a lot sooner than that. So, did I really need to do a test on Diablo to know if it was going to turn gray? Couldn't I look for those clues? Well, it was hard to tell on him because he had those really tall socks. So I can really tell if his legs were darker than, say, another bay foal without the gray gene. I also looked and looked around his eyes and I didn't see any white hair, but sometimes I'm told they take a few weeks to show up. So I just couldn't tell, really. Why are there so many gray horses these days? I mean, Arabians, very common. Andalusian, the pure Raza Espanol horses and Lusitanos are also very often gray. The Lipizzaner in the Spanish riding school in Vienna, all gray, and they have been for generations. And the French Percheron is predominantly gray. There's also a very famous line of show jumpers that all turn white with <laughs> pretty quickly. They're born a different color. They, they gray out to white very quickly. Like so many things about the color of horses, it turns out that human preferences had a big play into it. 
There is something mystical or mythical about pure white horses in the human's imagination. But pure white horses, doors that are born white, being so rare, very often just a random chance birth, and therefore so desirable because of their rarity, they turned out to be pretty expensive. So the next best thing was to have horses with the grain mutation that would make them white at full maturity and then fetch higher prices than darker colored horse. It was a preference. Where the mutation originally came from is unknown at this point, but considering that pale horses do better in the heat and the fact that Arabian horses can be found in the ancestry of so many breed, it might have come from that line very early on, we're talking thousands of years ago. Up until recently, the mystery that remained was why did some horses gray out so much more quicker than others? At first it was thought that maybe it's if they were homozygous for the gray gene, meaning they had two copies of the gray gene, one from each parent, that they would gray out much more quickly. And that was often the case, actually. But then came the question about melanoma. Why did some gray horses develop them more than others? Melanoma, as I mentioned, is a cancer of the melanocyte, and it mostly affects the skin. And while unsightly, it is not the lethal form of cancer that it can be for humans. In 2005, when the effect of the mutation was finally understood, it was supposed that if the mutation hyperstimulated the growth of melanocyte, then maybe some of them just grew out of control and started causing tumor. But why was melanoma more prevalent in certain bloodlines than in others? The answer finally came in 2024 when a second variant of the gray gene was found that started to explain these variation. The mutation on STX17 that we call the gray gene is actually a duplication within that gene. And to put it simply, it gives the animal multiple copies of the section that promotes the growth and the replication of the melanocyte. It doesn't affect the eyes, by the way. Those melanocytes come from a different branch complete and they are unaffected by that mutation. So if a horse has the gray gene, it has multiple copies within the STX17 segment that causes this super production of melanocyte in the hair follicle, leading to that rapid depletion that I explained earlier. But in 2024, what they discovered was that the number of copies varied, that sometime a gene would have three copies of that segment, and therefore they were starting to be able to distinguish between mutation with two copies and those with three copies. And now we have the G2 variant, two copies within the STX17, and G3 that has three copies of it. There's now a test to determine how many replication within STX17 your horse has, if you're interested. G3 is the most commonly found gray gene, by the way. It's the one that was selectively bred for centuries. It's the one that causes rapid graying, and it's found in Lipizzaner and Arabian, and it made its way into the warm blood and the thoroughbred lines. The G2 is not found in all breeds of horses, and in breeds where it does show up, not all bloodlines carry it either. It appears to be less ancient than G3, leading some geneticists to speculate it could have appeared in the last few hundred years. But like I said, it was discovered in 2024, so there's still plenty of work to be done to truly understand its origins and its prevalence. It was Connemara ponies in Sweden that were the key to this discovery. There were lines, you see, that were graying much later in life, like sometime not turning gray until they were in their teens, while the others would start their transformation at a more usual time, around five or six years old. The scientists were intrigued, and they wanted to know more. What's going on here? As it is often the case in science, discoveries are often triggered by, hmm... That's funny. By tracking the well-documented families via the stud book and comparing their DNA, they identified the difference we now call G2 and G3. So now, we have a better understanding of the variation of gray in horses. The link between dermal melanoma and the two variant of the gray gene is also quite interesting. But there are still things we don't quite understand. For example, it would appear that this mutation is actually pleiotropic, meaning that it has multiple different effects. It affects different chemical process and pathways, and that gives different results. It doesn't do just one thing. So the G3 gene mutation is linked, as we mentioned, with an increased risk of melanoma. But 
also a vitiligo, where the skin loses pigmentation too in little patches. Uh, it's also linked to speckling, when some of the specks of pigment for some reason remain, and so it gives the horse kind of a flea-bitten look. And of course, it's associated with the complete loss of pigment across the body, the graying, of course. Also, an interesting twist. Horses with vitiligo seem less likely to get melanoma. And there also seemed to be an influence on the base coat color of the horse, the, the color they were born with before they turned gray. So if they are chestnut or black or bay, it affects how quickly they gray out and it also affects their risk of melanoma. For example, homozygous black with the G3 mutation appear to have the highest risk of all for developing melanoma. But it's not well understood why at this point. Also, it turns out that melanoma in gray horse are not as deadly or as aggressive as melanoma in non-gray horses. In fact, they are very rarely lethal, if a nuisance, and they do appear later in life. But the reason behind this? Scientists are not sure why. So in the end, did Diablo have the gray gene? Well, here he is at six year old, still very much a bay with striking marking. The genetic test was negative. He did not inherit the gray gene for his dam, unlike his other two brothers. He will never turn gray.